Robert Michaels. I've been paragliding now for about four years, just under four years. Uh, what first got me into the sport was a video that I saw where a guy who flies paramotors flew to, I believe it was 15,000 feet on a paramotor. And uh, his name's Tucker Gott, and he has this YouTube channel. And uh, when I saw that, I said, I have to do that, have to fly somehow. Is there a certain type of freedom that comes with flying. Absolutely. There's a, a vast majority of people that do uh, aspire to fly. We stare at birds. We love airplanes. Um, actually, my instructor, Phil Russman, had mentioned in the beginning, he said it's either off or it's on. It's like a switch. And uh, when it comes to extreme sports, most of them are trying to fly. They're trying to do something that's going to get them in the air. The free flight, I would say that, that what really happens deep down, it's, it's almost a spiritual thing that happens when you begin to fly. And it opens up this whole other dimension to, to life that you, you, don't, you can't necessarily um, get other than this, you know, getting, off, getting your feet off the ground. I've flown in, I, I've got up to altitudes close to 10,000 feet above sea level, um, shared the skies with bald eagles have uh, been sucked up into clouds and seen just amazing things. And um, I would say that, yeah, there's nothing comparable to just getting in there. Because of the nature of the sport and the fact that it's a bit dangerous, there's a camaraderie, uh, the feeling of having a, a, a friend with you that is kind of going through the same things that you're going through. There's these really high highs with flying and then there's these lows that are very humbling and so there's this uh you go through a lot uh you, you're not just gonna fly it takes tenacity and um, i still am relying a lot on other guys their background and what they've learned on weather i think that's what brings everybody together uh, who's a pilot the hardest part of the process i would say starts on the ground it's the mental things that you have to deal with before you even get involved. Um, one hurdle for a lot of people and for me was the financial part of it. It's a little bit expensive to get into the sport initially. And uh, we're talking, you know, five, six thousand dollars before you even get your first flight in. Um, with training and gear, you can easily spend ten thousand dollars and, um, you know, just getting into the sport. Um, outside of that, I would say that understanding your wing is critical. The, the hardest part is knowing what to do when you feel the feedback from the wing. One of my other instructors, he uh, used the term, he said, you need to learn to speak winglish. Know what your wing is telling you. What inspired me to start the paragliding talk show was a event that I had, and it was a, a series of things, but uh, um, there was an event that happened over a site we have called Palomar. Oh my gosh! That was crazy. And 
what happened is I had a collapse and much of my wing went away. And uh, when it did, I overreacted and overcorrected and I made a series of mistakes that led to what we call a cascade event where I uh, lost about a thousand feet in less than a minute. Uh, luckily, I was very high when it happened, but um, had I been low, it could have been tragic. And um, I analyzed the video, that footage went viral on YouTube. And uh, so I got a lot of feedback from people, uh, but uh, there was a, quite a bit of stuff that I realized that I didn't know. And so I thought it would be a great way to glean information from people by interviewing some of the local pilots and um, it grew from there. And before I know it, I had some, I would say celebrity status people on the show. And um, the questions were initially just for me to, for my own personal gain, but it ultimately it turned into something that was helping a, a lot of people that are in the sport or interested in getting into the sport.